Hello, hola, zin chao, namaste, bonjour. I am Natasha Lewis, and I am currently studying instructional leadership. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who took the time to view my diversity plan. With the weather being so bipolar, literally, I have been a bit under the weather, so I thought this would be the best way to introduce my plan. My plan is titled Building Equity and Ensuring Equality Brick by Brick. Before taking this course, IL 552, Diversity Issues for Instructional Leadership, I took IL 562, Lead Change Student Learning. One of the required artifacts was to create a continuous improvement plan. Being an educator of over 17 years now, who has consciously always focused on and implemented diversity in my classroom and curriculum, I decided to develop a culturally responsive CIP plan. I did this because I truly want to be a successful change agent as a leader. I can honestly say that unfortunately, before taking diversity issues for instructional leadership and doing the coursework and doing the research, I had never heard the term equity when it refers to education. I had also never heard equality in education. I had only heard that term, um, you know, when it was dealing with the civil rights movement. But equity and equality are paramount. They are paramount in education. And this is the why. Unfortunately, I have um, encountered problems getting the video, uh, the audio of the YouTube videos to play where viewers can hear them. So um, I am going to cut out those videos and they are accessible to you through the link in my reference uh, on my reference page at the end. Um, you should be able to click on the link and go to the videos, but they have very good information on equity and equality and how important it is to the students and the conversations that educators are having concerning equity and equality. So those resources are there for you and it is, um, to me, very important to this discussion about diversity. And it is the reason that I am so adamant about um, changing the curriculum um, to an effective curriculum for all students. So I would first like to start with my executive summary where I will go over the demographics and some of the research um, that was done. Um, I'd also like to note that you'll see me looking to the side to my notes and to my other computer um, so that I can elaborate. I don't want to 
skip anything and um, I want to elaborate on some points um, that I did not include in my presentation. So you'll see me looking over to the side. Um, the executive summary. Gadsden City High School, GCHS, is a public high school in Gadsden, Alabama, founded in 2006. Before 2006, Gadsden High School consolidated with Emma Sampson High School and Litchfield High School to form Gadsden City. Now, Gadsden City serves 1,341 ninth through 12th grade students that live in Etowah County, and the school system employs about 93 full-time highly qualified and certified teachers with a ratio of 14 to 1. 68% of the GCHS students are minorities, and 63% of them are economically disadvantaged. A market leader in connecting colleges and schools with schools and families reported that Gadsden City students are 39% 39, 39 proficient in reading, which is extremely low and is below the state average. For our students to be successful in adulting after graduation, literacy proficiency must improve. One way to improve literacy is to implement culturally responsive instructional practices. That is where my plan comes in. According to Sadita, culturally responsive teaching is a pedagogy that recognizes the importance of meeting students where they are culturally and linguistically. They talk about this in the video that I was not able to show the full extent of, but they talk about this. The students and the teachers discuss meeting students where they are linguistically and um, culturally. Because when culturally competent teachers validate all students, they are more likely to feel valued. And the more they are valued, they are more eager to learn, to learn. This CIP, this diversity plan, incorporates culturally responsive teaching strategies into the curriculum to affirm all of our students, improve academic achievement, and prepare every student for college and or career. The mission and vision of Gadsden City High School is to inspire, motivate, empower, and prepare all of our students through educational opportunities, both secondary and post-secondary, and to excel in the competitive and technology-driven workforce. Our vision is to develop intellectually conscientious citizens that add value to their families, the community, and the world with pride, service, and skill proficiency. So let's get into the ACT subject proficiency among the underserved and non-underserved students. I'm sorry, students. So as you can see, the data represents various analysis of college and career readiness, school climate and culture, and equitable and culturally responsive instructional strategies. The development of this data was collected to better understand the academic growth of Gadsden City High School and the needs of the school and the community. ACT subject proficiency among underserved and non-underserved students. Um, under this category, Alabama administered the ACT to high school students. These figures displayed how well the school as a whole performed in reading, mathematics, and science. For Gaston City High School, assessment data from 2021 was compared state statewide against other data from this year. Note, the district and state data may incorporate a combination of data from 2019 and 2021 in some states. So as you can see, Gaston City High School ranks in the top 10% of public schools in Alabama for diversity. We have 68.1% minority enrollment. And you can see 
the different, sorry, the different categories, um, 46% black, 31.9% white, 19.9% Hispanic, 1.3% Asian, 0.7% two or more races, and then 0.1% American Indian or Alaskan Native. So let's get to talking about this school-wide reform for culturally responsive instruction. We are going to talk about the objectives, the action steps, and the strategies. So as I said, as far as culturally responsive teaching and data, Gadsden City High School ranks in the top 5% of public schools in Alabama for the lowest teacher-student ratio. As I said before, there are 93 teachers that serve 1,341 students. And according to the end of year Alabama Department of Education state report card in category of academic achievement that is based on ACT scores, white students at GCHS scored a 61.05. The Hispanic Latino student population score at the school was 30.30 and black students earned a considerably lower score of 21.83 on the academic achievement indicator. The school scored a 37.18 overall. On the same 2022 report, Gadsden City, a college and career readiness school, achieved the following academic indicator scores in college and career readiness. White students achieved 68.33%, Hispanic and Latino students uh, earned a 63.64, and Black students earned a 50.97. The school as a whole earned a 59.89 overall, and these scores are based on the 2022 Federal Accountability Indicators. Again, I'd like to repeat that the mission of Gadsden City High School is to ensure that all students are prepared for success. Fortunately, GCHS has one of the lowest teacher-student ratios in the state. With 93 teachers and 1,341 students, the ratio is 14 to one. This will work to our advantage as we strategically schedule students proportionately and diagnostically, intentionally implementing cultural Response, culturally responsive instructional strategies in our classrooms to meet the needs of our entire student population. And if you decide to look at that video at the beginning of my presentation, students even mention the fact that that student-teacher ratio is important, that one-on-one -on -one instruction, that attention, that is important when you are trying to implement a diversity plan, a culturally responsive teaching strategy. It is very important that students are seen and heard. Um, so Gaston City Schools, um, to our advantage, have a very, very uh, small ratio. 14 to 1 is, is awesome. So um, this plan can be effective at Gaston City High School. So let's talk about the objectives, action steps, and strategies. Here are the objectives. Uphold systems of support that create, promote, and sustain a welcoming and inclusive community. Ensure linguistic diversity is represented throughout the building and seek ways to reflect representation of world languages. Verify that course materials are representative of all students, including materials for centers, stations, labs, classroom libraries, and the school library. Ensure classroom and building decorations are inclusive of all students throughout the building or within the community, even the city. Here are the action steps that we will take to implement this plan. We will curate the curate the curriculum. I'm sorry, you all. 
identify and articulate the purposeful ways in which marginalized communities are represented in curriculum, including print, digital media, and other classroom resources. Employ authentic and modern technology usage inspiring digital literacy through an equity lens. Ensure assessments reflect the enriched curriculum that has embedded student identities. Embrace and encourage a balance of viewpoints and perspectives that leverage asset thinking toward traditionally marginalized populations. Assess one's story through multiple vantage points to gain a whole narrative that includes all sides of parties involved. Implement and integrate the wide spectrum and fluidity of identities in the curriculum. Ensure text selections reflect students' classroom, community, and family culture. Ensure teachers and students co-create content that encourages critical thinking about culture and includes counter-narratives to dominant culture. Use a resource tool to assess the curriculum and assessments for biases. Promote robust discussion with the intent of raising consciousness that reflects modern society and the ways in which cultures and communities intersect. Consider a broader modality of student assessments, such as performance portfolios, essays, multiple choice, state exams, oral examination, community assessments, work experience, social justice work, action research projects, and recognition beyond academia. Increase linguistic and dialect awareness. Establish a quarterly evaluation of teachers' best practices. Conduct a semi-annual review of teachers' personal and professional goals. Provide culturally diverse, inclusive practices, professional development for educators and administrators promote parental and community involvement, and provide teacher trainings, excuse me, on implementing the following culturally responsive teaching strategies. These strategies are activating students' prior knowledge, making learning contextual, considering the classroom setup, forming relationships. This was also talked about extensively in the video by students who feel that students that are going through things or that um, are on the lower income spectrum or are different in other ways. They want to form relationships. They need relationships. They need teachers to understand them. And this is very important. So if you go back and look at that video, it will give you a great insight on how students view diversity. Um, another strategy is to discuss social issues, tap into students' cultural assets, and incorporate popular culture. Here are the strategies to implement my diversity plan. We will utilize culturally diverse and inclusive practices, uphold high expe expectations for all students, become familiar with linguistic and dialectical differences, set high expectations for developing and using reading skills, select and use culturally responsive text for reading instruction, and implement explicit instruction for reading comprehension strategies. There is also an element of teacher evaluation plans and um, in my plan, I talk about it extensively, um, but here are some of the components of the plan. Um, there will be formal observation schedules distributed, student learning objectives uh, submitted by October 1st of each school year, the SLO roster and scoring template submitted, teacher will complete pre-observation self-evaluation, teacher will complete post-observation re reflection conference forms. Um, the evaluator and teacher will conduct a post-observation reflective uh, or reflection conference. 
I'm sorry, I'm trying to read off of my plan um, because with this screencastify, as you can see, um, the video of my presentation is kind of covering um, the PowerPoint presentation. But like I said, all of this information is accessible to you via the email that I have sent you my entire plan in totality. Um, teachers will also submit any artifacts or evidence of diversity plan implementation. There will be um, a final assessment form completed. Um, the teacher will then uh, attach any comments or evidence. Um, teacher and evaluation will uh, teacher and evaluator will develop the individual growth plan if necessary uh, for the teacher. And that plan will be completed by March 1st. There is also a professional development plan component. And I uh, tried to summarize this as much as possible, but to promote cultural competence, culturally responsive professional development opportunities for teachers and school administrators will begin and will spark the long and difficult journey to making a transformation in the system possible. A facilitator will be meticulously selected after affirmation of culturally responsive instructional practices expertise. And program participants will be eligible to conduct training within the uh, district. So there will be 20 bi-weekly classes, two hour sessions, four hour training on early release days, there is a two-year cultural competence development program commitment and um, teachers will be able, teachers and administrators or whoever participates will be eligible for continuing education units upon completion of the program. We also, I also added a student self-evaluation plan component. In this component, cultural competence will be evaluated in three categories, awareness, knowledge, and skills. Now, um, this, this self-evaluation tool is designed to explore individual cultural competence. An evaluation will be administered in the homeroom classes within the first two weeks of school, and another one will be given at least 30 days before the end of the school year. Its purpose is to help students to consider their skills, knowledge, and awareness of themselves in their interactions with others. Its goal is to assist students to recognize what they can do to be more effective citizens who are capable of working in a diverse environment. This is significant. This is significant for success. Our students have to be prepared to be able to work in a diverse environment. Um, there are, as I said, three sections, awareness, knowledge, and skills. And for each section, they are going to check the appropriate column. Um, so at the end of each section, there are uh, options that students can check um one of them meaning never i think that's one sometimes or occasionally is two fairly often or pretty well is three and always or very well is a four and then at the end of the evaluation they will add up each section and that will determine um, that scale is to help them identify areas of strength and areas that need further development in order to help them reach their goal of cultural competence. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole evaluation, but there are very, very um, relatable and very relevant uh, issues that are discussed. Um, one of them is, I view human difference as positive and a cause for celebration. They would have to rate themselves on that. 
I am aware that in order to learn more about others, I need to understand and be prepared to share my own culture. Um, all of these questions are geared so that students can evaluate themselves and they can see where they are on the cultural competence spectrum. Um, I am knowledgeable about historical incidents in America's past that demonstrate racism and exclusion towards people of non-European heritage. Um, you know, some of our students just don't know. Um, they really don't understand their own culture. Therefore, how could they understand someone else's culture? We have to start there. We have to start there. So that is why I added the student self-evaluation uh, self plan component. Now, there is also a very extensive tech plan um, that I have added to my plan. Um, the benefits of this tech plan and the fact that Gadsden City has a one-to-one -one initiative, this will um, benefit our professional development component. Um, this will help teachers differentiate lessons. This will give students and teachers and administrators access to a plethora of resources and information that are needed to push this plan uh, to promote diversity, to promote equity and equality. And then there are the communication benefits, you know, between student and teacher, between student and parent, between teachers and administrators, between students and uh, other students um, or other sources and resources um, that they need. Um, we really want to push this plan and it's going to take every area of the educational facility, every area of the educational system. So I also added the uh, distribution of federal, state, and local revenues to support the plan. I'm not gonna go through it, but as you can see, it is broken down from type of cost, resource units, unit cost to total cost. And everything from planning the meeting to the materials, um, to the travel time, um, all of this setup time, all of this is added to my diversity plan. So we know in order to um, propose or to promote this um, plan to make sure that it's effective, we need we need the support of our parents. We need the support of our community. Um, so I have added a parental family engagement and stakeholder support uh, element um, that discusses how we plan to include our stakeholders in this very strategic plan to promote diversity. So in order to involve uh, parents and uh, engage them to invest in this plan, we will hold annual meetings of parents and stakeholders. They will meet annually before the school orientation. Um, the parent student teacher connect organization will be introduced during orientation. So students can see the support that they have. At this time, the diversity plan initiatives will be discussed. We will also involve parents in planning, reviewing, implementing, and improving the diversity plan. It is a continuous improvement plan. Volunteers or selected parents will serve on the diversity plan committee. Meetings will be held biannually and minutes will be shared with parents and or guardians via the school website and the school newspaper. The lightning bolt, which is the school newspaper, will um, have parent surveys. Um, it will also have student surveys because we want, we want to gain parent uh, parental input and community input 
um, to facilitate areas of concern about the needs that our student school system and this community, um, the, the needs that we all have. Uh, we also want to involve parents and community stakeholders in planning how the federal, state, and local funds are going to be used to implement the plan. Um, surveys will also be administered to gain parent stakeholder input for how we should spend these funds. And um, we we already people want to know where their money is going. People want to know where the money that is being sent to the school um to benefit the school when they know more about where that money is going they will support they will support it we also want to design ways to involve parents and community of limited english proficiency di disabled uh students various or or parents uh various cross-cultural economic levels we want to involve them in planning and implementation of the plan. Gaston City High School's implementation of the Parent Student Teacher Connect program link will be used to educate, support, and bridge gaps among marginalized, marginalized communities. We will offer virtual focus groups with an interpreter if needed, bi-monthly to discuss the program, program progress, and data. Focus group input will be used to inform committee members to amend or add to the culturally responsive school initiative. So we want our parents involved. Diversity matters in education. And I'm not going to attempt to play this video, but I admonish you to, uh, I encourage you to look at the video um, and it will give you an insight on how students, uh, students see the importance of diversity. Um, teachers, we, we know the importance of diversity. It is taking these action steps that we need to take in order to implement and integrate these, uh, the resources that we need to these multicultural sources and resources that we need to push this initiative but diversity does matter so in our increasingly diverse and multicultural society it is more important now than ever for teachers to incorporate culturally responsive instruction in the classroom the evidence of diversity not only helps marginalized students succeed it also encourages acceptance and helps students to thrive in an ex exponentially diverse world. School culture and climate significantly, let me start that sentence over. I'm so sorry, it's a little late. School culture and climate significantly impact the outcomes of the school. So school leaders must create a culture where all students feel valued. Studies have shown that drawing from students' cultural knowledge and norms contributes favorably to reading comprehension and mathematical thinking. And according to neuroscience research, using text, materials, and examples that draw from students' cultural schemas and background knowledge make learning easier because it leverages students' neural pathways. And the thing about that is in one of those videos, well, I think more than one student said that they learn more from their peers. And if they are in the realm or under the influence of students of other cultures, they learn more and they are more accept they they are more accepting of the various cultures. And we have to use our influence to make uh, these cultures accessible to the various other cultures. We need, to, we need to know our students and we need our students to know our students. Diversity matters in education. Thank you 
for viewing my presentation. And as I said, I have sent you or will send you um, a my entire plan, an email with my entire plan um, added. Um, and again, thank you for being willing to view my plan. And uh, if you have any questions, if you have any insight, suggestions, um, please feel free to contact me. Again, my name is Natasha Lewis. Thank you again for your willingness to view my um, presentation. I appreciate it.